Welcome to part 5 of my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. So in the previous part we had done some more modeling, modeling the different parts of the snowman, and in this part we're going to be modeling the buttons and the threads on the snowman. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page with the links in the description, and that's a great way to help support this channel. And then one more thing before we start, I wanted to let you know about my furniture and home asset pack. In this furniture and home 3D model asset pack, you will get 250 furniture and home Blender 3D models, pre-set up for Blender's asset browser and ready to add to your project. Quickly fill in your 3D scenes just by dragging the models from the asset browser into your 3D scenes. The models have been split up into five different categories in the asset browser. The categories include office assets, living room assets, kitchen assets, dining room assets, and a combined bedroom and bathroom assets. There's also a free demo available that you can try out before purchasing. Check out the product with the links in the description, and you can also find the full product video with the link in the description. All right, so let's get started by modeling the buttons that we're gonna put on the snowman. So this is gonna be a little bit more advanced modeling, but I'll still go very slow and show you the entire process. So I'm gonna press Shift A for the add menu, and you might think that we wanna add a circle, and in many cases I would probably wanna do that. However, in this case, I'm gonna be adding a plane, and I'm gonna be adding a plane so that we can add a subsurf to it, and a subsurf will smooth it out, but then adding the subdivision surface will also give it some squares here, and we can delete those squares and extrude them down to create the whole for the butt. So this part in the process would be a great time to use the shortcut key Shift H because Shift H will hide everything else, but you'll just be able to see the object which is selected. So I now want to add a subdivision surface to the plane to smooth it out. So I'm going to press Control and then the 3 on the top of my keyboard. That's going to add a subdivision surface and on the render and viewport, I'm going to turn these both to 3. So now you can see it is circular. Now I want this to become actual geometry so that I can extrude down some holes in the buttons. So I'm going to apply this modifier. So basically modifiers can be applied and then when you go into edit mode the modifiers effect will actually be applied as a mesh. So what you can do to apply the modifier is click on the arrow and then you can click on apply or with the modifier selected you can use the shortcut key of control A. So with your mouse hovered over that modifier press control A. So now if I hit the tab key to go into edit mode you can see this is what the modifier has done. So before we just had a plane with four vertices but the subsurf has smoothed it out and also it's sub divided it. Now there is a problem with this. If you kind of look here on the edges, you can see it's still not perfectly round. There's kind of a little bit of a sharp point kind of right here and over here. So I'm going to be using a built-in Blender add-on to actually make this perfectly round. Now an add-on is something which you can install in Blender, and some add-ons people from the Blender community have created, and they might have made a free add-on, they might be selling an add-on as a product, but there's also add-ons which are built into Blender. So some add-ons you have to like download and install from the internet, but there are other add-ons which are already built into Blender, and you can just enable the add-ons and then use that tool. So kind of think of it as like a tool which is pre-built into Blender, which you can just enable and use. So to get to the add-ons, we're going to click here on Edit, and we're going to click here on Preferences. And then in Blender's User Preferences, we're going to click over here on Add-ons. Now if you purchased or downloaded some kind of add-on online, you would click on this Install button, and then you would actually add in the zip file of the add-on. However, there are already lots of other add-ons in Blender, which are already built into Blender, so you don't have to download them. So what we want to do is go here to the search, and we want to search for the loop tools add-on. So I've already enabled it, but you'll need to hit this check mark here to enable it, and then you can click on this save preferences, and that way the loop tools add-on will always be turned on in your future Blender projects. So choose save preferences, and then we can close the user preferences. Now to get to the add-on, you're going to press the N key. So I mentioned this earlier in the tutorial series, but the N key will open up the side panel, and this side panel is a very common place to add add-ons. So many add-on creators will put their add-ons here. I have some different add-ons here which I've actually made review videos about. If you'd like to check out my Blender add-on review video playlist, I'll have a link to that in the description and you can check out some of these really awesome add-ons. But what I need to do to access the loop tools add-on is hit the tab key to go into edit mode. So I can now scroll all the way down, scroll along these tabs, and we're going to click on the edit one. And remember you can only see this in edit mode because this add-on will only work in edit mode. So click down here on edit and then you can see there is loop tools. So this is the Blender 
another add-on which is already pre-built into Blender and we just enabled it. So this add-on has many different settings and things you can do, but the most common thing is you can select parts of a mesh and then you can click on the circle button and it will make it a perfect circle. So I'm gonna use that Alt feature again. So if you hold down the Alt key and then use your mouse to select a part of the mesh, that is gonna select the loop. And then I need to hold down the Shift and Alt key and we're gonna select this part and also this part and also this part. So all of the outer edge is selected. So I can now just click on the circle button and you can see it's going to fix that. So there it was before and there it is after. So now it is a perfectly smooth circle. So I can press the N key to close that side panel. Let's press Control S again to save the project. So if I now press the seven on the numpad to go to top view, I can zoom in here and I wanna just select some of these squares and then we can extrude them back in. So what I'm first gonna do is click here on the face select and you can see here's the center and here is all the center faces. So I wanna select the faces which are just one out from the center. So we're gonna select this one, hold down the shift key, select this one, and then shift select this one and shift select this one. All right, so those four faces, you can see they are one out from the center going away here, kind of in an X shape. So I wanna make these bigger because these we're gonna delete and then that's gonna be where the holes of the button are gonna be. So if I scale them, you can see instead of each one being scaled bigger from its center, you can see it's being scaled from the center of the object, from the origin point. So there's actually a way to change this. And so if you click right here on this setting, this is the transform pivot point setting. Now that might sound a bit complex, but this is basically just saying where is it going to transform the object or transform the mesh. So on default, if you click here, you can see it's set to median point and median point is going to be the origin point, which is the center of the object. So if you click here on the transform pivot point, we can change this to individual origins. And this way, basically there's gonna be an origin point for each part of the selection, so each one of these faces. So now if I hit S to scale, you can see they're being scaled, but each one is being scaled from the center. So I'm just gonna scale this up to a bit bigger, kind of like that, and then just place it there. So I can now click here to go to the vertex select again, and I actually wanna click here on the transform pivot point, and I wanna change it back to median point. And then what I can do is I can select this vertex and hold down the shift key and select these other vertices and I can scale them down a little bit so it is more of a square shape. Then I can select this vertex and hold down the shift key and select these vertices and I can scale these up a bit. So something like that. So now you can see they are squares. Now it might seem weird that they are squares because then the holes in the button will look square, but we're gonna be adding a subdivision surface modifier. And remember a subdivision surface modifier will smooth the edges. So it's gonna like calculate this position down to this position and make that smooth. So let's click here to go to the face select. I can hold down the shift key and select these four faces. So shift select those four faces. And then let's navigate right down here. And I wanna also select the outer ring. So what we're gonna do is now go back here to the vertex select and I can hold down the shift and alt key. We're holding down the alt key to select the loop of vertices and then the shift key to select multiple. So shift alt and select that, also that there, shift alt select that there and that there. So I now want to extrude all of these down. So I'll hit the E key to extrude and we're gonna bring it down maybe just about that far. And then I just wanna delete the faces. So we're gonna hit the X key and we're just gonna delete faces. This way it'll delete those faces that are inside there but it won't delete the outer vertices. All right, and that is gonna be the basic shape for the button. So let's hit the tab key to go back to object mode so we can see this a bit better. And I now wanna mirror it to the other side because you can see the back side doesn't look that good. So let's click on add modifier and I can go to the search here and we've already added it so it is in one of the recent modifiers so I can just choose mirror. And then I wanna mirror on the Z axis. So we'll click on Z and then we're gonna turn off the X. So it's now mirroring it up and down on the Z axis. Now, if I hit the tab key to go into edit mode, I wanna press the A key to select the entire mesh and I can hit G to grab and then hit Z and bring it up on the Z axis and just stick it right there. So now we have the bottom part of the button and the top part. Now there's a problem here and that is that I want this to be at the exact point so that the center there is basically merging together. So I could try to eyeball it, but the center actually won't be merged. So there is actually a setting for this and that is this clipping button. So if you check mark this clipping button, now when the vertices touch the mirror, they're gonna merge together. So I can hit G to grab, then I can hit Z and we can drag it down and you can see now they're gonna merge and they're not gonna overlap. So I'll stick that there 
And then I could also scale this down a little bit more. All right, that is pretty good. Now I actually made a small mistake and that is that I wanna add kind of a little lip on the edge of the button. So this is really easy to do. What we're gonna do is actually hold down the Alt key and then select that loop right there and that'll select the entire thing. And instead of it bringing it down, we're actually gonna bring it up. So let's first turn off the clipping button because you can see since it's merged, I can't bring it up on the Z axis if I hit G to grab. So let's turn off the clipping. Then I can hit G to grab and bring it up on the Z axis and we're gonna bring it up a bit. Then we're gonna hit E to extrude. Then after that, we'll hit S to scale and we're gonna scale that up like that, place it there. And then we're gonna, actually I think I'll scale this up a little bit more so it's a bit thicker. Then I'll hit E to extrude and I'll hit Z and we're gonna bring it down. And then we wanna turn on the clipping button again and then hit G to grab and bring it down on the Z axis, just like that. All right, so now you can see that is merged. So now we have this little bump here and that'll be smoothed out when we add the subsurf. So now we can go back to object node with the tab key. And then again, to add the subsurf, the shortcut key is control two. And I actually just wanna press control one and that'll use one subsurf. And then also the render here, let's turn that to one. So now I can use the object context menu and shade that smooth. And so now we have a nice little button. Now there's a few things that I wanna change this. So one thing is that it's a bit too thick. So let's go back into edit mode press the A key to select everything, and I'll hit G to grab and bring it down on the Z axis. And we're just gonna make that a bit thinner because it's a bit too thick. And then also I wanna add a loop cut here because I wanna make this a bit more round. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. And then what I can do is left click, and then I can right click so it hops back to its default position. So I'll just show you that again. Control R and it will show you where you wanna place it. Then you can left click and then it will edge slide it. This is called an edge slide because it's sliding along the loops, but then you can just right click and it'll hop back to the center. So I can now hit G to grab and let's hit Z and we're just gonna bring this up a little bit so that it's a bit more round. So just like that. Let's go back to object mode and there we go. We now have a nice little button. Now, if I zoom into the holes on the button, you can see they do look a bit low quality. So if you wanted to, you could turn up these subsurf values so it's a bit more smooth. However, these buttons are gonna be pretty small and they're gonna be pretty far away in the final render. So I'm gonna keep the render levels just at one cause we'll be looking at it from pretty far away. So I now wanna create some threads which are going through the button. And so for this, I'm gonna introduce you to curves. So curves are a separate type of object. So they're not a mesh object and they're not another object like a camera or a light. They are a separate type of object. So if I press shift A for the add menu, you can see right here there is a curve. And you're not gonna see all of these curves because I've actually enabled an add-on to add more curves. If you wanna actually see these, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then in Blender's user preferences, you can search for extra. And I've actually turned on both of these add-ons, so these add mesh and add curve extra objects. So you can hit the check mark and then click on the save preferences button. And these will just give you new primitive objects. So it's kind of a cool add-on just to enable, but I'm just gonna close the user preferences. So if I go to the add menu and go to curve, you are going to see this BZA curve. So I'm going to add the BZA curve and I'll hit G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis and you can see what it is. So if I hit the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see it does have an edit mode just like mesh objects, but it's not a mesh object because instead of having vertices, edges and faces, it has these handles here and you can hit R to rotate, G to grab and S to scale to move the handles around and there's gonna be a handle at each end. You can also select these points here and these are the curve handles and you can move these curve handles and that is gonna rotate the curve. So what we're gonna do is make this curve so that it is the shape of the threads and then we're gonna add thickness to the curve. And also with the curve, you can hit the E key to extrude the curve and make it longer or you can hit the X key and you can delete the vertices. It says vertices, but it's basically a handle. You can just delete that. All right, so I will select this handle here. I'll hit G to grab and then S to scale and then double tap the R key. And then we're gonna stick it right down here. We're gonna stick it inside that button. Then we're gonna select this handle hit G to grab, and then also R to rotate, G to grab, and then also S to scale, make that much smaller, and we're gonna rotate this one in, so kind of like that. All right, so then I wanna have a second one, so we will just select everything, and we're gonna do this in edit mode, so I'll press Shift D to duplicate, and then R to rotate, G to grab, and we're gonna make this one a little bit higher, and I'm actually gonna scale this one up on the Z axis so it's a little bit higher. All right, so now to actually give this thickness, we'll go back to object mode, and you can click right over here on the object data properties. And so this is gonna be the curve settings. So to make the curve thick, we can open up this geometry here that we can scroll down, and you can see that there is a bevel depth. 
So if we turn up this bevel depth by just dragging this value, and I'm actually going to hold down the shift key as I click and drag it so that my movements are more sensitive, so I have more control. So you can turn this up and it will make it thicker. So you can see it looks like some small threads. So I'm now going to go back into edit mode, and I can now edit the handles further. So I'm going to maybe rotate this, bring it down a bit, uh, maybe bring this over a bit. I just want to make it a bit more flat so it's not coming up so much. And then this one, maybe I'll select this handle here and move it up a bit, and maybe scale it up a little bit. All right, and this one, scale that up a little bit. All right, so something like that, maybe double tap the R key to use the trackball rotation and just put it right there. So that'll be it for the little thread there in the buttons. So I'm now gonna press Alt-H. Alt-H is gonna unhide the other objects and you can see the button is really large. So we're gonna select the thread and then Shift select the button. We're gonna scale it way down with the S key and then G to grab and we're gonna move that over. G to grab and then let's scale it down even smaller by hitting the S key and move it over again. And then we're gonna rotate this and let's rotate it on the X axis. We can just rotate this up here and stick it in here. And then also we can make this the new default side of the object. So I can press Control A and we can apply the scale. So that's now the new object's default size. And then we can press Shift D to duplicate, bring it down here and rotate it and kind of stick it right in here. And we can also bring it out a little bit farther all right, so the snow isn't going through it. Maybe double tap the R key and kind of rotate that over and bring it out just a little bit. All right, so something like that. All right, and I think this one here, I actually want to maybe bring this up just a little bit farther. All right, there we go. So I'll zoom out here and I can press Control S to save the project. So I hope you're enjoying this so far and thank you for watching. And in the next part, in part six, we're going to be using Blender's cloth physics to drape a scarf around the snowman. So Blender has physics and you can actually simulate cloth. So we're going to model a scarf and then we're going to simulate the cloth falling on the snowman. And then we'll kind of give it some thickness and make it look like a nice little scarf to keep the snowman warm. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and also the link in the description. And again, if you're enjoying these tutorials and you'd like to help support the channel, then definitely check out my Gumroad store and Patreon page where you can get lots of Blender content for study material or to use in your projects. And I do really appreciate all of your support, it really does help me to make these free tutorials possible. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next part.